Here are some important things to remember before starting. Use appropriate speeds and feeds. Use 800 to 900 RPM for basic cutting procedures and 200 to 300 RPM for deburring. Use oil before every cutting procedure. Always clean mating surfaces when changing tooling and securing your material. Familiarize yourself with your machine. Always check that the chuck can rotate safely before turning on the lathe. Next, grab the drill chuck and clean the mating surfaces thoroughly. Place the drill chuck into the tailstock so that it binds and doesn't come out. Then completely retract the drill chuck's jaws. Loosen the nut on the tool post and use a drill chuck to square it. To do this, position the tool post in front of the chuck, advance the tailstock quill so that the face of the chuck is flush with the tool post, and tighten the nut making sure the tool post doesn't move. Place the tool holder on the tool post and prepare to level the cutter. Grab the level's holder, clean the mating surfaces, and secure it in the chuck. Place a bubble level in the holder and position the cutter so that the level can rest on its tip. Loosen the nut on the tool holder and adjust the stop so that the bubble is in the center of the level. Make sure the bubble is still centered after you lock the tool holder on the tool post. Now grab your calipers, clean the jaws of the piece of paper, and zero the readout. Measure the length of your material and write it down for future use. Grab your material, clean the mating surfaces, and place it in the chuck. With a three jaw chuck, you need to make sure all three jaws are touching the outer diameter of the piece. Never hold the part with the jaw touching a flat or there will be a noticeable wobble. With the six jaw chuck, one or two of the jaws should not touch the part when held correctly. The part should stick out a maximum of 1.5 times the diameter of the part. Secure the part in a chuck starting with the zero mark. Put the lathe into high gear. You may need to rotate the chuck to get the gears to align. Release the e-stop and turn on the lathe. Use the RPM adjustment knob and the DRO to set a proper speed. You can use the RPM calculator on the computer attached to your machine or ask shop staff for assistance. Touch up on the face of your part and enter its length into the DRO for the z-axis. Now you can begin cutting your part down to length. Adjust the z-axis to make a 30 to 40 thousandths cut. Apply cutting oil and make your first pass using the x-axis handle. Continue cutting down the length, making sure to leave 10 to 15 thousandths for the finishing pass. Zero the z-axis before making the final pass. Now it's time to turn down the diameter. Touch off using the x-axis and zero the DRO when you make a chip. Adjust the x-axis to make a 30 to 40 thousandths cut. Zero the x-axis on the DRO again before you make a pass. Apply cutting oil and make your first turning pass making sure to stop 10 to 15 thousandths short of the turn length of 0.75 inches. Back off your part and stop the lathe. Grab your calipers and measure the diameter of your part, making sure the jaws of the caliper aren't touching a flat. Ask shop staff to show you how to properly measure the diameter. Once you have your diameter, adjust the x-axis so the DRO reads zero again and enter your measurement. Now you can accurately turn down your part. If your DRO does not look like this, 
then the method to enter the dimensions into the readout are shown as well. Leave 10 to 15 thousandths for the final pass to give it a nice finish. When the diameter is down to length, back the x-axis up so the cutter can pass a step, adjust the z-axis to the final turned length of 0.75 inches, and finish the step with the x-axis, making sure not to go past 0.75 inches in the x-direction. Now you can turn off the lathe and check the diameter and turn length with the calipers. Grab a drill chuck, clean the mating surfaces, and place it in the tailstock. Slide the tailstock closer to the chuck, secure the center drill in the drill chuck's jaws, and lock the tailstock to the ways. Turn the lathe on, apply cutting oil, and peck drill the starter hole using the tailstock's handle. Switch the center drill for the twist drill. To accurately drill to the proper depth, place a 6 inch scale between the part and the twist drill. Touch the drill's tip to the scale and zero the measurements on the tailstock's handle. Be sure to account for the thickness of the scale. Apply cutting oil and drill to the depth needed to properly tap the hole. Switch the twist drill for the countersink. Turn the RPM down to between 200 and 300 for deburring operations. Apply cutting oil and deburr the hole using the countersink. Hold the file with two hands and remove any sharp edges on your piece. Retract the tailstock sleeve to remove the drill chuck and replace it with a live center. Secure the tap in the tap handle. Put the lathe in low gear to prevent it from turning while tapping. Oil the tap, place its tip in the drilled hole, and hold it in place using the live center. To thread the hole, turn the tap two to three half turns in a clockwise direction to cut threads, then once in a counterclockwise direction to break the chip. If at any point it feels too difficult to turn the tap, back the tap out, clear the chips, and try again. Once you've tapped to the bottom of the hole, you can remove your part from the vise and clean your work area. Here are some important things to remember. Use appropriate speeds and feeds, Make sure the compound slide is all the way forward. Be careful when tapping or you'll break the tap in your part. Make sure your cutter is centered and sharp. Use oil before every cutting procedure. Clean your workspace and return tools to their appropriate place. Hit the e-stop and put the lathe in neutral before cleaning. 